anniversary of the ENIAC funding is everything, 40th anniversary of the ENIAC in 86. And I found a group of older women, they seemed very old to me at the time, um, talking about something that was very technical that didn't sound like anything I knew. And they were really in the moment, just like when you see a veteran and um, talking about you know, their time in Normandy. They were back in World War II, and there was something they were doing that was really cool. And I wanted to know what that moment was, and now you know too. It was a demonstration day, February 14, 1946, when their program debuted on the NEAP and was introduced to the public, but they weren't introduced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Kate, were you the, along on this 25-year journey, or, or was this something that, that you've come on board more recently to, uh, to work on the film? So, um, well, I met Kathy about a year ago, and I have to give her credit. She, without people like Kathy in the world who, um, who don't take everything at face value and who look deeper inside and find the truth in a, in a photograph in this case, that's how we, we help the truth um, come through our history. And so um, Kathy approached uh, <coughs> the film group that I work with, uh, Halcombe and Film Group, um, after years and years of looking um, to make a film out of these interviews that she had done really laboriously, uh, hours and hours with the women um, in 1980, was it 97? And um, had been wanting to turn it into a film for a long time. Um, finally, the day came, she was able to connect with some people who wanted to give a generous grant to have a film made, and she, by luck for, <laughs> for us, um, turned to us and asked us, would you please make this film? And we looked at the story and we thought, this has to be told. This is an amazing story, and you have to be in it. This is part of your journey as well. So it's really a journey within a journey. And um, we've known each other for about a year, and it's been quite an adventure, a great year. Yeah. Kathy, was it, was it ever uh, terrifying to be a subject in the documentary yourself? Or was, was that a, you know, I'm a historian. I'm more than happy to, to be in this film. You know, the shock of my life was looking at the rough cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, l l like it or not, that's the shock of all of our lives sometimes uh, when, uh, when we're in things. Are there uh, questions out here? Yes, go ahead, sir. All right, so um, von Neumann's original machine was also programmed almost exclusively by women, you know, contemporaneous with this. And I just wondered if you had any contact with any of that community. Uh, the, the question, just to repeat it for the House, uh, von Neumann's machine was also largely programmed by women. Uh, did you have any contact with those uh, those women? Talking about the Johnny Act? Yeah, the one in Princeton. Um, just a little bit about it. As you know, Dr. John von Neumann joined the group. He was, he was a consultant for the Army during World War II. Um, he was involved in Los Alamos. He was involved in, he knew a little bit about touring. Uh, he certainly knew about ENIAC as he came in and became part of the ENIAC process a little bit. Um, and I believe Adele Goldstein, who was actually one of the teachers when the women were computers and they had to learn the numerical analysis of very sophisticated mathematics techniques to hand calculate the ballistic trajectories using that uh, mechanical desktop calculator that you saw in the reenactment. Um, she was one of their teachers um, because she was a math genius. And I believe she was consultant, but I'm not sure it was Johnny Ock. I know she was a consultant for Los Alamos later on on some of their early computers. So she may choose very close to John on the near work with them on that as well. Yeah, go ahead in the back. Do you know if any of the women stayed in contact over the years or if that was another reunion on their on their own when you came along? They, they did stay involved. Some of them stayed in computing for decades. Uh, some of them married engineers. Uh, Kay, um, Kay McNulty, who you see in the pictures, married John Mockley, and became Kay McNulty, Mockley, and um, was very involved in his company and his vision for computing. Um, they, she stayed in touch. They, they did stay in touch. In fact, there's a picture, there's a reunion in 86 before I got involved, uh, where they were all together for the last time before Bruce passed away before I started working with the story. Um, and um, they, some of them were best friends so for, for the rest of their lives. Uh, were a percentage of these women Jewish women? Two of the six. Mm -hmm. uh, go up there and then we'll come to, we'll just play the whole side here like Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Are you planning on releasing this on the internet? Eventually. Um, there are certain festivals that don't allow you to release on the internet before they start. Which is not us. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't acknowledge me in that. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Um, yeah. But I know some festivals, so we're submitting to the festivals. And um, then we'll probably be doing, we're working on a college, high school kind of circuit. And, um, but at some point, absolutely. Um, the sponsor books were um, people very involved in the family of Google. And uh, so it will be on YouTube. <laughs> so one more question. Why uh, that the gentleman in here, the, the historian that was also being interviewed, uh, not being interviewed, participating in it, why was he in He's a he's a computer history expert for Smithsonian Institution. So he was um, he was told that we actually interviewed Kathy. She's in Virginia and um, he's based in Washington D.C. and is one of the world's experts on computer history. Uh, um, they did see the trailer, and I have to say I was a little nervous when I showed it to them, um, and they loved it. Um, the little people just told the story and they kept the and things like that. Um, they were very, very supportive of the project, and that was wonderful. I'm a 1984 computer science graduate. I did not know the story. It's fantastic. Great length as well. Did they actually invent parallel computing? In the initial cases, they were, they were inventing the, the parallel computing of the problem and calculator problem. The ENIAC was a, a parallel processor, um, only by virtue of its architecture. It had 40 individual channels, and they could operate simultaneously. So the square rooter could be operating when the multiplier was operating, when the accumulator was operating. Uh, which was an adder and, uh, and a memory use. It took me 15 minutes to figure out. I just got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> so since time was of the essence, space was of the essence, um, to really maximize the operation of the system, they figured out how to do it in parallel. And Betty Holberton, the great popper says it's the great, greatest programmer she ever knew, Betty Holberton would say that it was just mind-boggling to program it in parallel. Gene would lead the conversion of ENIAC to one of the world's first sort of program machines a few years later to make it so they could have a much bigger program than simply the one the, the wires allowed it to handle. And at that point, it became serious. Go ahead. You mentioned that the Google founders are big, uh, or uh, moving forth behind this. Can you talk a little bit about how did the women ever get a chance to go to tour any of these software companies? And if so, what was the reaction like when they visited these companies? Um, first, let me share it with Dan Wojcicki and Lucy Southworth Case, who is their family foundation, who funded the last piece of it. Miss Case, of course, was his family foundation, funded the World History 97. So without these amazing people, this would but people give donations from for years and years, small, right? it was amazing. Uh, so it was, but it was uh, Ann and Lucy who got us to the final stage. Um, so, sorry. What's the question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the two of Oh, we brought when Jean, but they did meet with very exclusive women in technology, but mostly on the East Coast because that's where they were based. But um, Jean won at the Fellows Award at the Computer History Museum. I remember when she called because I hadn't told her nominated her, and she was so excited. Um, and so I found out that was just down the street from Google, and I called some friends at Google and uh, asked if they weren't able wanted us to come over. We came over for lunch and met with young women engineers. And I always wondered what an eight-year-old computer scientist and a 20-year-old computer scientist had in common. And I worried a little bit about it ahead of time. And the only thing I needed to worry about was separating them. Out. <laughs> 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 um, because the excitement of being at the cutting edge um, is still the same. And they just, um, the cafeteria is really crowded at the main Google campus and it's noisy. And they were all leading in, sharing stories, and Dean was telling stories, and the young women were telling stories. It was incredible. So thank you for asking me. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Go ahead. And, and then, yeah. Did the women ref uh, project any uh, any frustration about their invisibility, about how if they had been born in a different era, perhaps they would have had fame and the other things that might have accompanied their success? They were, to some extent, a little frustrated they weren't introduced on demonstration day. This was the bullshit projector, the real program that was run. Um, you hear, you know, a, a little bit of frustration, but also some, you know, resignation about it. No, the, the amazing thing uh, that I found was how grateful they were to have done this amazing work during World War II. Uh, to be a math major hired to do mathematics. Women didn't get jobs in mathematics in 1939 when some of them graduated. 
university. So here was the army hiring them to do cutting edge work um, that was extremely important to the front line. No, uh, the thing I got was that they were totally grateful to be at where they were, when they were, right place at the right time in the And sort of to that point a little bit is that um, we, have, we also have two other segments to create the, the full trilogy of the story of women in computing. And um, the idea is we'll follow them through time, the, the women in, in the 1990s who were changing the world during the internet boom, and today's next wave of coders who are setting out to change the world. And so we knew that it, we'd have to sort of straddle this delicate line of, um, no, they didn't get the credit they deserve, but we, we didn't want to, you know, really focus on a big chip on their shoulder. Um, they didn't really have it either. Um, but we wanted to inspire young women and, and young men um, that, um, and we sort of carried this idea of um, they're standing on the shoulders of giants, and that's what we need to bear in mind moving forward. And that's how these women, I think, came across. They really were these, these um, silent giants when for so long. Mm -hmm. oh, two, yeah, go ahead, right in the very back row. Yeah, um, you said that you're, you're going to go to colleges. Um, did you plan to go to high school? Yeah. Yeah, when we go to the cities, we're also planning to go to high school. And uh, hopefully the ideal is um, to put together panels of women in technology. What we're finding is that a lot of women who go into technology often have a parent in technology. And they're opening the door, the mother, father, it doesn't matter. But um, we talked about that in the second film, actually. Uh, but so we want to open the door for everybody to go into technology, and uh, so we're hoping to put together panels and introduce women in a, a wide array of technologies. So you're saying this is going to be a full-length documentary? No, no, it stays at 20 minutes. Uh, we'll have, but we will have the other two segments. I'll let Kate talk about that in a second. But it's designed to fit into a classroom period, and we're working on some curriculum Great job. things now. So. Um, so 20 minutes seem like a good life when we talk to teachers. And the distribution part of it is still coming together, but the idea is that each three, each of the three segments could stand alone or be bundled together um, for a feature down the road. Another question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just curious to know if you're going to expand it, if you're going to do any mention of the uh, women at Wesley Park. Wesley Park? You know, British Computer Society, I spent some time with their documentary and talking about oral histories and how and interviewing these amazing women about World War II. Uh, British Computer Society put out a lovely documentary about the Wesley Park women with wonderful interviews. Um, I think it's available online. Um, actually, we were just talking about perhaps a double feature in London. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, we're not uh, different stories. I'm, I'm an expert on this one. 